as a watchman, I'm here to warn you. I'm, I'm, I'm blowing the trumpet. I'm telling you today, ladies and gentlemen, that the, the judgment is coming. This things they blame god for what they're feeling they blame god for their coronavirus they blame god for the way the government is acting but never do they blame themselves never do they take responsibility for what they are doing today is a wake-up call for the people of north new jersey and this may be the last this may be the last day that some of you live You see, patience is, it's not often easy to demonstrate. Looking for the perfect job, waiting for a life partner, hoping to conceive children, being the victim of an injustice, long lines at the checkout counter, and bump to bumper traffic are just a few of the situations in which it is easy to be impatient. Often we feel, or should I say often, we can even feel that our impatience is a righteous anger in the face of irritations and trials. It is human to feel this impatience. But we are called to trust in God's divine timing, sovereignty, love. The Bible praises patience and listens it as part of the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Through 23 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I came here today, not only to warn you, but to talk about patience and grace is God spoke to me today and he told me that there's people in this area that need to know about the grace. You need to know why God is so patient on you. While some of you are going about sinning every single day, God is so patient, so loving, waiting. When you went to sleep last night, no one attacked you. You went to sleep, and you had slept. And for some of you today, when you ate food, there was no poison. There was no poison. God bless you, man. And as you walk around here right now, no one's bothering you. You see, through patience, it is often associated with waiting. And waiting is often associated with passively or a gentle tolerance. The biblical meaning of tolerance does not imply the passive, but most of the Greek words translated as patience in the New Testament are active and robust. robust. You see, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, provides an example of this. Note that patience in this verse is translated to endurance. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also 
Lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Persevering, a race in the race takes endurance and the followers of Christ are similarly expected to endure trials be on the lookout for promises to be fulfilled and have self-discipline when reaching for a goal. This is a patient stance but not a passive one. God wants you to know something today. No one knew I was coming here today. No one knew this was going to happen. That's just like death. You just woke up one day and then it just happens. But the bad news for those who don't come to Jesus is when it does happen, there ain't no, there ain't no, I need to go back and fix a couple of things, Lord. There, no! Once you leave this life, that's it. Because of our human nature, because our human nature is not inclined towards patience. Like for an example, some people, they can't wait for a train. They can't wait for a taxi. They can't wait for the food to be done. But we must make the choice to build patience into our character as with strength or should I say as with everything else however we need God's strength and grace to develop this fruit in our lives you know there's a there's a truck over there it's called the relief bus. It's a relief bus. Just think about the words relief. Look how God, look how good God is. You can go over there and get relief. Food or whatever they're giving you. Sanitizer, mask. I guarantee you, God made that possible for you to be provided something a relief bus right over there you should see how good God is we need to remember how good God is we need to remember what he has done for us and what we need to continue and for some what you need to do but for those who walk with Christ what you need to continue to do for God even when times of struggle may abound Colossians chapter 1 verse 11 I say this being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy the trials that we face are opportunities for us to perfect our patience through Christ's support. So when things happen to you, like things happen to me, you would think that since I walk with God, my life is pretty much peaches and creams. I roar every day. My life isn't any better. But the difference between my warring and your warring is that walking with God, I have the assistance of the Holy Spirit. And for those who are living against God, you're handed over to the devil. But God is still calling you to him so that you walk with him, so that he builds you up. Because all those times we had sex outside of marriage, all those times we were stealing, all those times we were lying, God still had patience. He still had patience. He still was like, I'll forgive you. And that's what he's calling you to do today. To come to him. So he can forgive you. 
so he can set you straight today. We are called to rest in God's perfect timing, which is beyond our linear of understanding. When we face unfairness and wicked schemes, brings me to Psalm chapter 37, verse 7. Our development of patience hinges on our hope that the coming of the Lord is at hand. The Lord is good. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. To the soul who seeks him. Limitations, chapter 3, verse 25. Some of you today are not seeking him. The Bible says the Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. We complain. We complain about all this stuff that's happening. We complain, of, hey, wait, wait, the red light's too long. We complain all day long. I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, There are three steps that help us develop patience. And this is what God wants you to know. He wants you to know His patience. He wants you to have patience. Thank God we are called to first give thanks to God. In all situations for His unwavering love and support. Be thankful for what you have. And be thankful for what God is going to give you. In all things, I, I thank God in advance. Seek his purpose. We may endure hardships for many reasons and seasons according to God's will. Sometimes we experience trials to be a witness to God's redeeming love. Or sometimes we go through a painful event so we can learn greater dependence on God. It's not to destroy you and tear you down. It's not, oh, God hates me. That's why I'm in this life. My parents mistreated me. Never wanted to know me. Abandoned me. That's why I hate God. What a lame excuse. The Bible contains, come on, I'm, I'm going to be real with you. Can I, go, can I go a step higher? The Bible contains numerous examples of people who were characterized by their patience in the face of trials. Job is one of the greatest stories of a man acting in patience instead of disobedience to God. In the midst of the time, in the midst of the time when Satan was attacking him. Job didn't curse God. He didn't say, Lord, I hate you. No, he, he understood something on a higher level, on a level, on a level that we need to be on. Come on now, some of you say praise God, praise God, but you don't know God. You don't, you don't practice the fruits of the Spirit. God is calling you today to do just that. James mentions Job and also the prophets when he gives us examples of how we are to act when we are in difficult situations. Situations that you are in right now. Come on now, this is a perfect message for a time such as this that we are living in. It's hard sometimes. To see the forest from the trees. It's hard sometimes. When you're looking at the tunnel, you don't see no light. But in my life, God is the light. I don't need to look down a tunnel and say, is there any light? Because if I don't see light, if I don't see light, does that give me a reason to doubt God? 
thing that you need to understand today, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't give you a right. God loves each and every one of you. That's why he sends people like myself here to speak to those who need to know. Job was finally rewarded for his dependence on God. Abraham, also having patiently waited, obtained the promise. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 15. And thus Abraham, having patiently waited, obtained the promise. The promise. Jesus demonstrated patience as well when he was led to the cross. Did you know that someone died so that you can have life? Someone died so that you can have the way to God. Someone died so that you can have true eternal life. Someone died so that you can get to God. Someone died so that you can know how to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Someone died so you don't have to go to hell. Someone died. His name was Jesus Christ. He died on the cross so that you can have eternal life. The writer of Hebrew gives Jesus as an example of our endurance. Therefore, since we Since, since, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set aside, excuse me, that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith, who is the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. It's important today to understand just what patience is. A human's natural response is impatience and frustration. We see that through, the, through, the, through the, the flesh. But since we have been made new creations in Christ, we can practice developing patience. And we see this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. We have the strength of God and the hope in God's promise to always work in our favor to lean on while we develop this difficult characteristic. Romans chapter 2, verse 7, reassures us that to those who by patience and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immorality, Im immortality. He will give eternal life Today it's important to seek Jesus Christ If there's anyone Today Who wants to give their life to Jesus now not a second longer the first thing that you must do is repent 
Why do I say repentance? Well, the Bible says in Acts chapter 3, verse 19, Repent therefore and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Amen, Brother Lewis. No, I tell you, the Bible says, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Now you see the urgency of why we must turn and believe in Jesus Christ. Life is only found in Him. There is no other name. No Bernie Sanders, no Joe Biden, no Obama, no Donald Trump, no Hillary Clinton. No other name given among men by which we must be saved. There's only two, there's only two places after death. Heaven or hell. Heaven or the lake of fire. And what you do determines that outcome. Listen, the Bible says the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient. They go that word patience. Is patient towards you, towards who? Towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. People today are feeling like they don't need to repent. They say, what did I do that I need to repent? They have their own standard of being good. That's not going to get you to heaven. That's not going to get you any closer to life. See, the Bible says the times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. He says, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face, who face? His face, and turn from their wicked ways. Come on now, you guys are not hearing me. And then this is what going to happen after we as a people do this. He says, and then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Today I'm looking at a land that needs to be healed. I'm looking at the people who need healing. If you want the word of God, if you want change in your life, it's here today. It's here right now. God is literally reaching out to you right now. You feel that tug in your, in your body. That tug of wanting. God is reaching out to you. No matter what condition you are in, God can take you up. No matter if you're dirty, you're filthy. You wouldn't believe the type of background I came from. But God still reached to me. Just like he is reaching to you. And he ain't got to do this. There ain't no other God that's telling God, or there ain't no other God that's telling Jesus, yeah, you got to do this. When Jesus went to the cross, he went by obedience. 